All right, guys, Dave Max 6. We're back at the Mecca. This is D built by Broser. And E, we have Mark back today. Yes. <laughs> Mark Durando. He was in my A for a minute. Yeah, yeah. MIA. Yeah. He had a little surgery, done a little hernia surgery. He recovered from that. And now we're getting him ready for the West Coast Classic. Awesome. Which is, uh, what, about 12 weeks away? 12 weeks away. Good to have you back, away. Mike. Yeah, it's good Mark. to be back. So, yeah, so listen, uh, we, uh, after the last show, which we did a show basically about bicep training and how to change uh, your angles, uh, the body angles and where you hold the dumbbell to sort of hit the muscle from different uh, directions and different angles and get different uh, muscle fibers hit. One of you guys uh, actually commented uh, on the video and mentioned how great it would be to do something like that for triceps. So first of all, we appreciate the comment very, very much. And we encourage you to leave comments because if there's anything you guys want to see us film, we'd be happy to do that. So if you have any suggestions or things that you want to see we haven't done, just lay them out there and we, we read all of them. So thank you for that. So what we're going to do today is we are going to do something for triceps, a couple of different movements. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you is a close grip bench press done on the Smith machine two different ways. The standard way, uh, which basically hits the overall tricep complex pretty much easy, evenly, evenly all the heads. Uh, and then something that I call the Merlin close grip bench press, uh, which we position the hands differently and the elbows are forced outward. Uh, and this forces a little bit more uh, um, lateral, uh, more, more of the uh, long head, long head tricep, which is the biggest head of the tricep and the most mass. It also takes a little bit of the shoulders and the chest out of the movement. So again, just showing you how just slightly different changes in hand positions or body angles can take one movement and turn it into a completely different movement. And we will have Mark demonstrate that in a moment. Okay, so now he's doing the standard close grip bench press. Uh, he's, you know, doing it with just a little bit about shoulder width grip, which uh, this is up to you. You can go shoulder width or a little bit closer, depending on what's comfortable for you. Uh, and he's lowering the bar down to just about the lower portion of the chest. And this is, you know, the standard way of doing the movement. Uh, great tricep mass builder, works all three heads pretty much equally. But now we're going to have him change hand positions. We're going to have him flip his hands inward. He's going to rest the bar. Uh, really much on his palms, so he's not grasping it. He's resting the bar on his palms, and his elbows are forced outward. So what this does is it actually takes some of the anterior deltoids and the chest out of the movement, first of all, so the triceps are a little bit more isolated, and it also forces much of the work onto the long head of the triceps. And when you do this movement, and you do it the way he's doing it right here, and then you get off the bench, when you feel the blood go into your tricep, you actually will feel the long head of the tricep more than the other heads. But again, he is of course working the entire tricep. We're not just isolating it, we're just targeting the long head of the tricep. So give this a try. Next time you do close grip bench presses and you'll feel the difference. Okay guys, so we're here at the Mecca and we are doing some tricep training today. And I wanna show you uh, some subtle changes that you can make uh, when doing a cable tricep movement. Uh, the way you can change uh, not only the position of your body, but also the position of the cable, if you have an adjustable cable, uh, to just take a, a, a movement and just change it slightly, change the angle of pull, uh, the angle of squeeze, so that you are just hitting the triceps in different ways. And again, every single time that you hit a muscle from a slightly different angle or plane of motion, you can affect different motor unit pools, which means you're getting a greater number of muscle fibers. The greater number of muscle fibers that we can exhaust every workout, the more you're gonna grow. So I'm gonna have Mark demonstrate three different positions on a cable push -up. Okay, what he's doing here, one arm is on arm at a time. He's using a standard position, straight forward. His elbow is up, uh, about parallel to the ground. And this is working the entire triceps, but getting into the long head as well because the elbow is approaching the ear. Now what I'm gonna have him do is change his body position. He's gonna go over to the switch and angle. He's gonna bring the hand over to the right shoulder and now you can see he's going from his ear and he's pressing outward so rather than chopping straight down he's changed the angle and he's chopping outward this is going to change the way the tricep works this is going to affect different muscle fibers and this is going to help his growth and now we're going to actually change the position of the cable which i'm going to do for him oh no he's going to do it So now, instead of changing his body angle, he's gonna keep his body angle in the same place, but he's going to change the direction of the cable. So now, the pressure's gonna come from straight behind him, rather than behind and up, as it was before. Now, this is just a subtle change, but it is gonna affect the way the muscle works. It is gonna get different muscle fibers. Doing things like this are excellent uh, for supersets, where you can exhaust yourself in one position, 
uh, and drop the weight by a little bit and switch to another position and keep going. Because again, you will exhaust, like I said, more motor unit pools, more muscle fibers, and you will get more muscle growth. And this goes for any body part, not just the triceps. So give this a try. Okay, guys, this is a bonus movement. Came over here to do calves, and I started experimenting with machines like I always do to get the triceps up a little bit more. So this angled calf machine, I just turned into sort of like a close grip bench press, although it's like a half military press as well. So what he's doing is keeping his elbows close. He's tucking them in close and he's pressing up just using the triceps, keeping his shoulders out of it as much as he can and his chest out of it. There's a lot of pressure on the tracks up here, especially at this angle. So if you have this angled calf machine, give this a try. You might even be able to do it on a standing calf machine, just standing straight under it. So give this a try if you want to do something a little bit different and uh, blow up those triceps. All right, Biggie, this is the uh, Ask More Than, Ask More Than Monday uh, part of the show. I'll be about by Roller. So you get, uh, you get some questions this week? I got one, so I'll let you. I'll let you. Yeah, I got one today. This week, one. this week. So, but okay. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let your fans uh, answer it. Well, the one the that uh, stood out to me this week, uh, I thought was an interesting question, was, what is uh, the most, as I see it, the most underutilized exercise in the gym? Uh, and obviously, you know, I've been in the gym for so long as a trainer and bodybuilder and coach, uh, and I do look around and see what people are doing. So. Um, I thought about it for a while, and I think the exercise that came to mind for me, which maybe will surprise you guys, is uh, the cross bench dumbbell pullover. And the reason why I chose that one is A, not a lot of people do it. So it is obviously underutilized. Uh, it used I, to be more before, back yeah, in the day. Back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, Even 80s. Yeah. Um, I think that everybody focused on it more because they thought it could expand the rib cage and so on and so forth. And I don't know if it can really do that, but um, but it's an excellent exercise uh, for both the chest and for the back, especially if you know how to do it uh, and tweak the form. Uh, and I used to do it back when I was trying to gain mass and I was younger, pretty much every chest and back workout. Uh, you, know, you know we may have to do it on the next B-belt now. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm just my, my my mind's like jogging. Yeah. Right so you know, actually, I'll, I'll just talk about quickly about what I'm talking about with the form, and then actually, it would be a good idea to, to show it on the show. So when you're doing it for the chest, uh, you want to keep a little bit more um, the elbows a little bit more bent, uh, maybe to where or maybe almost close to a 90 degree bend, and you want to lower the dumbbell almost straight down and back towards the floor, uh, and then of course you get a you get a, a pull in the chest take a deep breath uh, and then you raise the dumbbell back overhead keeping the arms in the same position uh, almost, really over to the over the chest uh, rather than just over the head so if it's over the chest and when you get over the chest you want to kind of like contract and get that little squeeze at the top uh, and that way you, you get a little bit more chest now if you want to get a little bit more lats and, and pull-offs is one of the best exercises for lat width that you could possibly use because it works the lats or the terrace muscles right up under the armpit so it gives you that width right right under like if you do a front double bicep or you put your hands overhead uh, so it's it's underrated for that you should use it but what you'd want to do is you want to keep the elbows not quite as bent as you would for um, the chest and you want to actually reach not straight down to the floor but almost back further behind you so you're reaching it down out and back like if you were to pass you. it to somebody else yeah as if you're kind of passing it to somebody else and and that'll allow you to get a little bit more of a stretch in the lats rather than the chest uh, and then of course you want to make sure you get as deep a stretch as possible and then you bring the dumbbell only to a point over your forehead because that'll keep the lats under tension uh, rather than when you do it with the chest and you bring it over the chest so uh, the, the exercise is, is it's just one a very very basic movement it's definitely a mass building movement and also if you happen to be one of those people who train chest and back on the same day uh, back like the way Arnold did in his day uh, it's a great transition exercise as a final movement uh, between you know making your last chest movement say uh, the dumbbell pullover uh, and then it's almost like the last movement for chest and the first movement for yeah. back. so it's a great transition yeah. movement uh, so I think that's the most underutilized movement and I think it's, it's it's one that should be used and it's very very effective for both chest and back training yeah we got to do it now so we'll do it on the next yeah. Yeah. next yeah, yeah, good, good question <laughs> <laughs> okay Biggie so this is actually um, a, good, a good question I, I thought about asking yeah I think we may have asked it like <laughs> Three and a half years ago when we first started doing the show but i think it's it's okay if we recycle the <laughs> questions a little bit it's been a while um so i know you're a big proponent in in, in pretty much stay you know in, in 
good shape to decent shape you know all, all year long and um, you don't really believe in the off season per se or not off season the way people mean it um, but what would you say the main difference between uh, a contest prep and, an, and a let's say there's no show looming okay so if you have someone and first of all when you when you have someone hiring you for for a contest prep how long is the prep most of the time uh, is, it, is it is it 12 weeks 16 weeks I mean what what is it you yet uh, that you deal with uh, well, that depends on the condition of the, the condition person that, that, that yeah. they're in. Uh, so, you know, once I once I get my hands on somebody and they become a client, uh, then most of the time I keep them, like as you alluded to, in a, in a certain condition year round. So, but it's the first time. So, it comes to you for the time. first time. Well, you know, it's it's really different. Like, you know, the first time you came to me, we kind of did like a sixteen week prep. Seventeen. Seventeen week prep. Yeah. Um, I've had people come to me uh, who. Um, you know they're already in pretty good shape. Hey, let's let's lose a perfect example. Um, IFBB Pro Bola, <laughs> who just came to me the other yeah. day. Uh, he is seven weeks from the um, the show in May, which is the California. Yeah. And uh, I took a look at him to see if he actually was within striking distance seven weeks out, and he is. Wow. Uh, and nice. you know I know that I can bring him into stage shape in seven weeks. And then there are other people who come to me and and they'll say, you know, what do you think? And you know. Then you know, twenty weeks. <laughs> here's, a, here's another good example. We had him on the show um, uh, a few week, a couple weeks ago. Was uh, Jay Chicago Jones, uh, and he was on the show with us. And literally, I said, looking at his body, I said, let's take a whole year. Uh, and and the reason why I said take a whole year is because we were kind of really building him from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. We needed yeah. to add muscle on him yeah. and get him in shape. So yeah. really, you know, it really varies from person to person, and it vary. It really the main thing is what kind of shape are you coming to me in at that point in time, and then I'll know what the um, you know the smartest how long the time is smart to get you in shape and when I say smart I mean uh, not rushing it right uh, and not pushing you to the point where you're getting sick or when you're losing muscle mass to lose the body fat okay the second part of that question would be once you start working with someone and, and you already put them in shape once the show is over and then we you know, you get ready for the next show which may not be you know sometimes I mean when, when you're already in shape why not do a few in a row just to kind of you know, so you get to learn their body like we did, you know, in the first year together. I think we could be like five times in the first year because you were still learning my body and all that stuff. But uh, last year, which was the first one, I actually only competed once or twice. It was really uh, uh, an uh, uneventful year for me, which is where, I don't know why I didn't we'll compete more, but uh, <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I'll tell like you that. <laughs> but um, but but once once you're done with the shows and let's say, okay, I wanna, we, let, we wanna take some time, we wanna make some progress. Um, I know you're not a big believer in, in putting on a lot of body fat in, in the off season and just, you know, there's, just, there's no point and I, and I hate it too, but what would you say uh, the main difference between an off season quote unquote with you uh, would be versus, you know, someone else who, you know, may not care if you put on, you know, 40 pounds of fat. Well, you know, uh, the, the reason why I've actually, I hate the term off season and yeah. I call it progress season is because, yeah. you know, that is uh, the time to make progress from show to show, whether that means, uh, and I'm not talking about when you have like two or three shows in a row, I'm talking about, you know, if you have, you know, four Few months, months yeah. four months from one show to the next or a year, yeah. uh, however you're going to do it, uh, you need to go into a season of progress because you're not really looking to uh, make progress during the contest prep, you're looking to hone in what you've already built. So, I mean, for me, uh, obviously there will have, you know, there will be um, something uh, to think about in terms of, you know, if, if, if the person says to me, well, I don't want to compete again for another year versus I don't worse, I want to do a show in three months, how much weight I will allow them put, to put on. But even in my, in my most extreme cases, uh, I really don't like people to be more than, uh, you know, 15 to 20 pounds if you're a big guy. Uh, from your contest weight and if you're a smaller person it could be even five to, to eight pounds and you feel like even though it's very little weight over contest weight you can suddenly progress absolutely 100 percent i mean a lot of people think that you know bulking up is how you make the progress there's two problems with that number one it's been shown that uh the more body fat you have on your body the less tendency you have to add muscle mass so actually the less fat you have on your body the better your body is at adding mass that's number one Wow. Number two is is that, and, and this is just undisputable, you put on a whole bunch of bulk weight in the off season, you get strong, you know, you, you feel huge, you have to diet that weight off. And, right. you know, nine out of 10 times, most people diet all the muscle off that they gain because they have to do such a severe contest prep. Uh, and 
you know, part of the reason is, is not only because you have to get rid of so much body fat, but you've also stretched the skin out to such a large degree. The skin takes longer to adhere to the body. Uh, when you're, you know, you could be in, in, a, in what would seem like really good shape, but the skin could still be stretched and need six to eight more weeks to adhere to the body. Mm. Uh, and, you know, those types of things you have to think about because, you know, you have to keep dieting in those phases. And when you keep dieting, you are more vulnerable to losing muscle mass. So to me, uh, not only I, I don't want, I don't want to say it just makes sense. I want to say that it's fact that if you can stay if you can stay disciplined enough to to stay closer to contest condition, you will not only be able to add muscle mass um, uh, more efficiently, you will be able to have a much easier prep going to the show, which means that you will retain more muscle mass. Your skin will always be tighter, so you're going to always end up in better shape. And then also, I think another big factor is is that when you can see what's going on with your body in the off season. Uh, when it's not covered in tons of fat, you can tell what your weak points are. You can tell what your strong points are. You know what you need to work on and what you don't. When you're yeah. all bulked up, you know you can't see when your you know, right. triceps are weak and your biceps or your chest is behind or whatever. That's but true. when you're in shape and you're in decent shape and your body fat's low, you know what's going on and you know what you have to target in the off season. So I really think there's, there's absolutely no reason uh, for anybody to bulk up in the off season. I think that it's, uh, it's an antiquated way of doing things. Uh, and not a very efficient at all. What would you say the most amount of weight one should put, like 15, 20 pounds max? 15? I maybe? mean, if you want to, you know, maybe put, uh, you know, a, a percentage on it, you know, like maybe uh, stay within about um, maybe 10 percent of your contest weight would be, you know. You okay. Know, so if you weigh 200, say maybe 220 20. would be the max that you would want to go. Would be fair. Yeah. You know, uh, you and I actually stay closer to that with you, and a lot of my competitors stay closer. But it depends because I know not everybody can stay that disciplined in the off season. But as long as you're reasonable, as long as you can still see your abs, as long as you're still in single digit body fat, you don't have to be five percent year yeah, round. But yeah, if you're single yeah, digits yeah. and reasonable, uh, then you know you're in a good place uh, to you know to make gains. What would you say? Um, as far as you know, cheat days and things like that in the off season, what would you say is reasonable um, when it comes to let's say there's no show coming and you know you're taking in the off season, but you're trying to stay as lean as possible? What would you say is reasonable as far as cheat days? Uh? Well, I think that's another thing that you know obviously has to be decided by you know an individual's metabolism. There are some people out there who can have you know a cheat meal every single day and they stay lean. That's you know that's on the one side. Then you have some people who they have one cheat meal a week and it affects them. So yeah. that's something that I have to learn as a coach mm. uh, and understand. But I mean, I see no reason why uh, you can't at least once, maybe twice a week, schedule a cheat meal if you make sure that all your other meals are on point. Mm. Uh, also, I believe that you should be do cardi doing cardio in the off season. I don't think you should just stop cardio. Right. Uh, you still should be some cardio as part of the program. So uh, if you do these things, you should be able to have one or two cheat meals a week, uh, most people. Uh, beyond that, probably too many people will probably gain gain you know fat uh, unless you're just a genetic freak. So yeah. I think that's I think that's reasonable. I mean, my I, I myself just to use myself as, as an example is you know I pretty much allow myself to have a cheat meal either every Friday or, or every Saturday night, which is enough for me. I feel great having one cheat meal. I look forward to it, and I find that it doesn't affect me at all uh, in terms of the way I look. So uh, I don't, don't even do that, and you don't even do that. I know. <laughs> uh, uh, I have I've been off stage for a long time now. Uh, but but that's what I allowed myself to do when I, I'm able to keep myself a single-digit body fat that cool. way. So, um, you Good. know, I think that's reasonable. All right. Thanks, Merlin.